Good morning. I am Sue Joyner from First Congregational UCC at Albuquerque, New Mexico. It is an honor to stand here with all of you who love down this morning. Friends, we gather here in the protected shelter of God's healing love. We are free to pour out our grief, release our anger, face our emptiness, and know that God cares. We come to comfort and support one another in our common loss. We come together to, to commend to God with thanksgiving the life of Pamela Mars Shepherd. We gather to hear God's word of hope. Hear the words from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Yahweh is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. This God does not faint or grow weary. The devil of understanding is unstable. God is powerful and strengthens the youth. Youth will faint and grow weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. As we gather this morning, I want to introduce you to Reverend Dr. Bill Lyons, the conference minister from the Southwest Conference UCC, who is with us and will be outside following the service. Also, Brendan Mahoney, who is chair of the Committee on Church and Ministry. The conference stands with all of you in this grief. Let us pray together. Holy God, whose ways are not our ways, and whose thoughts are not our thoughts. Grant that your Holy Spirit may intercede for us with sighs too deep for human words. Heal our wounded hearts made heavy by our sorrow. 
We thank you for Pam, who you have graciously received into your presence. Help us to live our days in a way that honors Pam's life. Help us to remember that nothing, nothing can separate us from your great love for us. Amen.
nephew, the favorite nephew, and godson. Pam was an incredible woman. Uh, she was intentional, compassionate, and fiercely protective of who she was. She found a sanctuary in the outdoors, constantly spent her time improving the lives of others, and used her incredible gifts to build bridges and strengthen her community. She was unapologetically herself, which cleared the way for me and our family as I came to understand my own identity. She was the first person of her community I knew. I didn't know I had those kinds of people in my life, let alone in my family. So when I grew up in a small conservative town and realized I was also like her, I knew that even if I lost the rest of my family, I would always. That unconditional love gave me the confidence I needed to come out. As a Democrat. <laughs> Over the last number of years, I had come to rely on her more and more. When I found myself in a position of leadership during tragedy in my local LGBTQ plus community, I leaned on her for guidance. I remember expecting something grand and profound. And I asked, What do I do? How do I lead in this moment? And she said, No, just be human today. Right after Pam died, I was talking with Nancy's dad, and we both had the same thought. Pam's gone. I need to talk to Pam. Pam will know what to do. Just be with me today. As I was thinking about Pam's mom and her life, I realized I get a chance to step into her shoes for a brief moment. I get to stand in front of people she stood in front of every Sunday and see what she saw. The cops for me. Knowing that there are people here and out there on Zoom who are dedicated to compassion, equity, and justice, just as she was, gives me a medical hope that the causes she championed will continue. I'm so thankful to have this, have this woman in my life. She taught me that life is short, and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk with us. So I hope we will all do as Aunt Pam did. We sweat for love. Make haste to be kind and run kind and run headlong into intentionality, compassion, and grace. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Job. Chapter 10, verses 11 through 12. I've been told this was the text for Pam's final sermon. Leave it to Pam to find life giving words in the book of Job. <laughs> Listen for what God's Spirit is saying to God's church. You, God clothed me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and steadfast love and your care has preserved my spirit. The word of God. I invite Nancy Stack to offer a few words. Like your faces. Pamela Moore Shepherd was one of the bravest, kindest people I have ever known. Even her chosen name spoke volumes as to the length she would go to claim and honor her own personal history. And the stories of others. Our stories make us strong, Pam would say. Mars in the middle for warrior-like strength and determination, and the chosen last name in honor of Granny Shepherd, a strong, determined woman who loved Jesus not only in theory but in deeds. As a poor lay pastor herself, Granny Shepherd took Pam by the hand, and together they walked the walk. 
by giving food and clothing and everything they could to those who bless. Now I have to tell you in case you don't know Pam that well, but I think you do. She was a very thoughtful and organized person. All of the time that Pam would spend, and she did, and I would listen to her detailed instructions about this very memorial service, and I all the while taking copious and good, I might add, notes, only and invariably to find Pam smiling at me and saying, but you know, I'll be dead. <laughs> she seemed happy about it. I met Pam in the mid-90s at the first ever Gay Pride Gathering on Taos Plaza. We shared passion for human rights, LGBTQ equality, and radical justice, justice for all. After a guest teaching and a special speech class with Pam at Northern New Mexico College, we fell in love. And yes, we had our first date at a dive restaurant in downtown Española. <laughs> we came together and we made each other better. Tam, I believe, is divine providence. Tam and I were part of the first wave of same-sex couples rushing to get married as then San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom opened the doors to City Hall for gay couples to finally and legally get married. We were, in fact, the very last couple to make it through those double glass doors. Ultimately, those marriages were overturned, but we never stopped fighting. You never stopped fighting. We were married for 13 years and family for 36 up to the end. What adventures we had. An avid outdoors woman, Pam taught me almost everything I know about wilderness, hiking, river canoeing, canyons rich with native culture. Together we built three homes, raised four dogs, six chickens, and we blessed a host of loving friends and community, many of you are here or on Zoom. Though our lives took different trajectories, our vows never wavered to love and cherish and push each other and ourselves to be the very best, the best versions of ourselves. Pam loved her friends and he, she loved her family. She wished and tried to give her nieces and nephews all the goodness in the world and to save them from some of the pain she incurred. She tried with all of them like always. And she was delighted to welcome her new grand niece, Riley Wagner, into the world. Pam was a remarkable woman on so many fronts, known for her especially dogged efforts to help those at the margins, the poor, the ignored, the undervalued, and the invisible. A teacher, an award-winning published writer and poet, a wilderness enthusiast, Pam supported and fought tirelessly for environmental and human rights issues to the end and throughout her life. Many of you were not aware that Pam had been living with an illness for some time, an illness that seemed to elude doctors for years. Some days were better than others, but Pam being Pam and a bit stubborn, continued to work as long as she could. I was there when her last service to Taos UCC was to get the centipede for a grant she had been pouring over for weeks, sometimes barely able to hold her head. Accomplished in the field of education herself, Pam thought that everyone who wanted a shot at college should get it, regardless of their financial status. With that objective, Pam set out to create the Bridges Project for Education decades later. And I know you're out there in Zoom, thank you. A still thriving and growing nonprofit organization. Because of that ongoing work at Bridges, Countless young people and returning students acquired college degrees, leading to better jobs and higher wages. In 2002, Pam and I built our little dream home on the west fork of the Santa Barbara River. We were there not nine months before 9 11 walked the world. It was in the aftermath of this tragedy that Pam was called to 
or by the voice of God, or for all I know, the voice of Granny Shepherd, <laughs> to work to God. To work with God and all of God's be beings in need. Sam was accepted to the Pacific School of Religion in Berkeley, California. We have, she graduated with honors. At his graduation, Pam's mother, Jenny, proclaimed that now Pam's whole life makes sense to her. Pam was called to the UCC Church of Ashland, Oregon. I know some of you are here and on Zoom, a church where she is beloved and in which she quadrupled in size and spirit in just a few short years. Pam worked her whole life to change lives and shape policies for better living and dignity for everyone, but most especially for those living in the shadows and in the margins. After a volunteer season in Georgia at a social justice farm called Koinia, Pam returned to her heart home in Taos and began working on building a UCC church in Taos. The mystery illness began to hit Pam harder at this time, but in spite of that, the Taos UC community has continued to grow and thrive and create an amazing array of social justice programs like the Medical Debt Relief Program, the Little Food Pantries, Border Relief Projects, and more. Pam worked for all of us, and especially for those who didn't feel we belonged anywhere. I think of no better way to honor Pam's radical hospitality than to pass on the words that she spoke every Sunday at the beginning of every UCC service. And they went like this. Whoever you are, wherever you are on your life's journey, you, you are welcome here. Pam, my soulmate, my partner, my friend. There is only one Pamela Mars Shepherd. Until we meet again, I will love you forever. Amen. The reading from the sixth chapter of Matthew. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat, and what you will wear, and drink. You might not want to do the body more than you will. Look at the birds of the air. They either sow, or reap, or gather in the body. Yet, I tell you, do you not have more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in full splendor, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, won't God do much more for you? You of little faith. Therefore, do not worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is those without faith who strive for all these things. God knows everything we need. Seek first God's reign and God's justice, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There is so much to say about him. I have been clearly instructed that this service cannot go over an hour. That came from Pam. <laughs> so I promise not to talk forever. If you promise 
to keep talking about Pam. Tell each other the stories and your experiences of Pam, and may we all do our best to honor her beautiful life. From the time that I met Pam, I was drawn into her beautiful, gentle spirit and her depth. I will admit that I often felt envy at the way she lived with such clarity about how she would spend her time and the things that she knew for sure. There's no point in my trying to make that magical. It was life or death for Pam. She had faced her own mortality and she knew that every choice she made mattered. How many of us can see things that clearly? Pam walked on the earth and she flew on the wings of the spirit at the same time. Now, I have known people that do one of those, but she's the only person I've ever known who did both at the same time. She walked with Jesus and she led with her heart in such a way that she took my breath away. Pam was a fierce advocate for justice and she leaves a beautiful legacy in her wake. Nancy talked about the Bridges Project for Education that she started. And Nancy told me that she would go around Taos and say to young people she met, like in the checkout line or anywhere, what would you do if you could do anything? And when she did that, she planted seeds of hope and inspired people to do and believe they could do anything. And they did. In January 2009, Pastor Pam of the Ashland UCC made the national news when Pam publicly refused to perform legally binding wedding ceremonies for opposite sex couples if she couldn't do the same for same sex couples. In a movie but illegal, Pam and other clergy members of that congregation married four same sex couples in front of a large audience of family and friends. The Ashland UCC Church is a story of transformation from fear to hope, from self-doubt to confidence, and faith in abundance that was inspired by Pam. Her memory continues to inspire them as they use the shepherd room to learn, pray, and worship. Pam was a writer and a poet. She was a visionary who gave birth to the Taos UCC and she lovingly wove together this beautiful community. She was a powerful preacher. I had the privilege of watching her last sermon from October 3rd. She preached about Job. Pam's relationship and love for God were visceral. She lived and died completely connected with God because she knew in her bones that we cannot be silent. I'm going to quote her sermon because I need to hear it. Perhaps you do too. She said, stay with the real questions where your own life meets this story, where suffering meets your own God skin to skin. The mystery of God is in the yard. Bad things happen to good people all the time. How do we live with the sense of a good God in the face of the suffering we see all around us? No matter what happened to Job and his wife and their lives, they kept on talking to God. Job was wise and decent when he the answers. He just chose relationship over everything. And he trusted in the mystery of God. In the end, God will stand upon the earth, and I will see God. God is faithful. Job will never let God off the hook. I hope you won't let God off either. Demand God for yourself in the middle of your suffering. Tell God about your suffering. Tell God what you want and need, but keep talking. Stay in relationship. Demand that your Redeemer live. May it be so for all of us.
If you're wondering where God is today, you just heard it in Pam's sermon. God is right here in relationship with us. Our job is to keep talking to God, to choose relationship above all else. If you are immobilized by your grief, let it be and know that you are held by God. If you are wondering what is next, look around and see where the greatest need is and ask what you can do. If you're feeling pure gratitude and love, say Pam would love that. My friends, Pam was clear that her work here was done. She is at peace. I hear her words, in the end, God will stand upon the earth and I will see God. She knew that because she refused to give up on God and she knew God would never give up on her. Look for God. Be assured that God is with you and God walks with you as you step back out into the world to continue on with your life. I believe that the beauty of Pam's life will accompany us wherever we go.
Good morning. My name is Jamara Hayner, and it's my Hold privilege. On, oh, sure. oh, sure. Sorry, we got to unmute you. Now you're here. All right. Hi. Uh, good morning. My name is Jamara Hayner, and it's a privilege to share a few words on behalf of Towson United Community Church, which was just one of the many faith communities that brought, Pam brought light to on her journey. Over the past two weeks, love has poured in from across the country, from Ashland First Congregational UCC in Oregon, where the congregation grew to five times its size because of her spirit. Yes. From Quinnia Farms in Georgia, from Pennsylvania, from across the Southwest Conference of the UCC, from Pacific School of Religion, where she was a student and a board member, and where she's remembered for helping people connect with their deeper values and their purpose. One of the things that Pam did best was welcome. Not just welcome us into a space, but welcome us to who we truly are and welcome us to the path that she could tell that God was creating for us. So many times over the past years, and certainly in the past few weeks, we've asked each other, how did you find this place? Or how did this thing happen? Whether that place was Taos UCC, Taos itself, seminary, or table or little food event, bringing 11 communities together to buy and forgive almost $2 million in medical debt for Taos families, hundreds of them. And the answer to all of that was always Pam. I'm here because of Pam. But we can also ask that question as what brought you to this point in spiritual life? What brought you to that moment of being able to see God in the person next to you? To allow yourself to say yes and to put down your net and follow whatever the universe was calling you to do. Pam welcomed us to be spirit is alive and well there and she is alive and well for each one of us in those moments that we'll have later today a week from now or 10 years from now when we find ourselves wondering if we should take that first step on a new adventure when we worry will this work is the right thing what if i do it wrong can i really live this honestly will god really catch me if i fall so Pam will be there with a smile saying, I have no idea how it's going to turn out, but I can promise you that God's got this. What a gift. Thank you, Pam. Love you. Let's pray. Oh God, before Pam was ours, she was yours. Now we offer her to you in deep gratitude for a life so beautifully lived. May we release her to your care, trusting that she is now at peace. We thank you for the ways Pam lived and walked with you, and we thank you that she knew you were with her. We place our trust in your mystery that we cannot fully understand, and we do so committing that we will stay in relationship with you, with one another, and with our beautiful earth. We pray in the name of Jesus, who walks with us. Thank you. 
uh, to say my name is Michael, this is Ro on guitar, Thomas on bass, and Brother Louis behind us on harmonica. We had the privilege for four years at this point making music with him in SCCC. We are honored to have to sing for her today. To sing for her today. I have the privilege to do this. She requested that we play the song on her patio. Yeah, I didn't. I'm happy to sing. Please sing along. I'll fly along. We would make her glad wherever she is here that we all sing along. As loud as you care. Come on, let's <laughs> She's alive and well. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, fun. Uh, Mask on, please. Mask. Mm -hmm. uh, she's alive and well. I'm Casey. I have a local station. And uh, I will turn on the UCC chat room for information about how to access that show. Uh, destroy the radio station and click on uh, programs that can be heard. Thank you. 
already heard the words um, that I'm going to say because I stole them just straight from Pam. I was so moved by them that I wanted to use them today. And uh, we will be using them at First Congregational in Albuquerque tomorrow as well. My dear friends, life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the divine mystery who is beyond our ability to know, but who made us and who loves us and who travels with us, bless us and keep us in peace. Thank you.